Time to put some lead down range. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> What's up my dudes, Suit Monkey here, back again. And uh, something I've recently noticed is that a large number of players love playing Bangalore, which is good because she's a great legend, but I've also noticed, and maybe you have as well, that a lot of players either have no clue how to use her kit, or they have some idea, but they fall short of getting the most out of her abilities. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop being the Bangalore that your teammates hate to be around, and instead, show you how to truly unlock Bangalore's full potential, stop making the same mistakes, and why she's arguably, no cap, one of the most underrated legends in the game. Okay, first things first, and most importantly, we gotta talk about Bangalore's tactical, specifically her smoke. This is your bread and butter, and also what makes her one of the most aggressive legends on foot. But more on that later, because in the same breath, smoke is also what makes Bangalore such a pain to be around, because not only do most random Bangalore seem completely hellbent on blending both themselves and their teammates in the middle of a hectic fight, this just usually gives the enemy a free advantage, since in most cases, they can still see exactly where you are. So the first step to becoming a better Bangalore is to stop smoking yourself in the middle of fights at random. And naturally, the first question is when is it okay to smoke? Well, like most things, it's not that black and white. So as far as the basics go, 100% pop your smoke before reviving a down teammate. You already can't move and your teammate is definitely going to be one shot when they get up. And having your smoke down will greatly increase your chances of resetting successfully. Also, definitely make sure you smoke beacons before rezzing. Because again, not only are you standing completely still, but you're also kind of begging to get crabbered. In some cases though, if the beacon is safe, you can do what I do and shoot the canister straight up into the air so it falls a lot closer to when your teammate lands. This gives them more time in smoke before it disappears and it allows your cooldown to start earlier than if you'd shot it afterward. This is important because the less time you spend without your smoke, the better. And of course, when looting, checking a care package or healing, especially after a fight, smoke the area so that any third parties can't see you and you have a window to react either by getting away or engaging from an unexpected angle. Now, with the basics out of the way, the main reason that most Bangalores aren't running around at full power is mainly because there's an inherent idea that smoke, in whatever form, is a defense mechanism, historically used to hide or disappear. And thus, most of us subconsciously save our smokes for defensive situations only. Now, don't get me wrong, you should definitely be smoking to break line of sight when retreating, but on the flip side, smoke is possibly the ultimate offensive tool when it comes to opening fights and attacking teams aggressively. It's both underrated and super effective for two main reasons. One, not only does it disorient players, especially when they have no idea where it came from, but two, they normally scramble into the open or run back to cover when it happens. And this is what allows you and your squad to quickly close the gap while the enemy is blind and confused, giving you a huge element of surprise when the fighting starts. Ultimately, leading me to the main point about how smoke should really be used. Rather than using it to hide from the enemy, you actually should be using it to blend them instead. Let me explain. You need all your senses during a fight, and your main goal as a Bangalore player is to consistently cut the enemy's senses off, enabling your squad to move freely, not the other way around. Initially, this concept might be challenging, but the quickest and easiest way to start thinking about smoke as more of an offensive tool is to view Bangalore's tactical like this, I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye, versus this. I think we all know who gets more kills. Hence, whenever you're being shot from a rooftop, a window, or being third partied from a distance, smoke these areas directly, blinding the enemy and forcing them to either reposition or have to stop shooting and wait until the smoke disappears. Also, since the tactical itself can go extremely far, chances are if you can see it with your eyes, you can probably hit it with smoke. And if for whatever reason you can't hit the enemy directly, shoot it between you instead versus smoking yourself. This way, you actually break line of sight as opposed to blending yourself and putting your whole team at a disadvantage and probably pissing them off. This tip is a especially useful when you're flanking or on the move because small basically gives you 20 seconds of free cover and also a little known fact which is super useful is that you can still shoot reload and heal with your small canister out meaning you pretty much never have to stop moving and during your 1v1s you can use it to disorient your enemy even while mid spray which is pretty funny and something people never expect all this is made twice as powerful when combined with the next and equally important part of Bangalore's kit double time the main reason i call Bangalore the queen of 1v3s double time basically increases your speed by 30% whenever bullets or grenades come close to hitting you and even if you get hit as well. It's 2 seconds long, practically has no cooldown and the only condition is that you need to be sprinting for it to activate. That is pretty OP because what it means is that pretty much you always have access to double time without even thinking about it, especially if you use auto sprint. In contrast, while Octane's stim is 10% faster at 40%, it also takes a bit of his health. Bangalore on the other hand basically gets free stim during fights with no penalty whatsoever.
whatsoever, making her really good at fighting for two major reasons. One, not only does it mean you can get to and play your own cover much faster than a majority of your enemies, two, it also means they essentially get punished for shooting in your direction and turning you into a faster and more difficult target to hit. And when combined with movement, Bangalore is practically one of the most difficult characters to fight face to face, especially when stacked with decent gun skill. I mean, we've all seen what Shift can do. Hence, the key takeaway here is to always be sprinting with Bangalore because, well, there's really no reason not to. Everything from sprinting, sliding, climbing, tap strafing, super gliding, even peeking during fights, and all other forms of movement are boosted by double time, which is the core aspect of Bangalore's kit that easily makes her one of the best legends for in-your-face playstyles and close quarters 1v3s. And as a side note, even though it's not entirely necessary, using a digital threat with any SMG, shotgun, or pistol you're running as Bangalore means that once enemies are smoked, they usually have no choice but to retreat when they're both being blended and taking damage without being able to respond. And a quick note before I continue, always make sure you're pinging digital threats for your teammates. If the guns can use them, your squad will have much more firepower when your smoke goes down, versus forcing your other members to play outside and around it. And this concept becomes borderline unfair when your squad contains a Seer, a Bloodhound, or a Crypto. Especially a Seer, cause combined with any information legend, Bangalore instantly increases what fights your team can effectively engage or disengage from, which again highlights the offensive nature of her kit. And speaking of offense, we finally arrived at possibly the most misunderstood and misused part of Bangalore's kit, her ultimate, Rolling Thunder. Now, this one is understandably confusing, mainly because it's really hard to see the impact it's having from the ground level, and to even begin making sense about when and how you should be using Rolling Thunder. First, we need to understand how it works. Number one, Rolling Thunder will always fall in the direction you're facing when you throw your flare. Once it hits the ground, missiles fall one by one, forming six rows, each containing six missiles, basically forming a six by six grid, and after about four seconds, each one explodes in the order it landed, dealing 40 damage per shell and causing an extremely long eight second stun, blurring your vision, and also happens to be the longest stun in the game. So yeah, nasty. With that in mind, the most frustrating thing you can do as a Bangalore player, besides throwing your ult with no open air above, is instead using your ultimate to start every engagement. This is a huge mistake, because not only does Rolling Thunder stun your enemies, it also stuns your teammates as well, with the added bonus of damaging Bangalore herself. Hence, whenever you start fights this way, you demolish any chance your team had to engage the enemy until the ult is finished, which by then, the enemy is usually already gone or on the counter attack. This habit mainly stems from seeing your ultimate as an overhead missile strike, intended to damage your enemies before moving in, when in reality, that's really not what it's made for, even though in real life, it makes total sense. So what is the real purpose of Bangalore's ult? Well, truth is, there's actually more than one, but before I go on, if you like the video so far or you think the information is helpful, leave a like and tell me in the comments what you think about Bangalore's kit. And if you really think I deserve it, subscribe. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the video. Now, the core function of Bangalore's ult is that it acts as an extremely large air denial tool, allowing you to zone players where you want and don't want them to go, which in essence means that Bangalore can single-handedly control the flow of battle on a macro scale. And it's from this all the other uses extend, with the first one being third-party denial. One of the best examples is if you've just finished a fight and you suspect you're about to get thirded, throwing your ult in that particular direction will force any enemy teams to rethink their approach or stop dead in their tracks, preventing or delaying any third parties. Next, if the area is small enough, you can zone sessions off by throwing your ult effectively funneling enemies into areas where you can capitalize. This is called crowd control, and it means that you can effectively force enemy squads to rotate, allowing you to take advantage of better positioning, height, more cover, or even to escape. And usually, it's one of the only scenarios where it's okay to start an engagement by using your ult, forcing the enemy squad to go in one direction, then cutting them off before they escape. And while it's a great technique, this however requires coordination, so you're gonna have to communicate. And speaking of escaping, if there's enough space and you need to get the enemy off your back, doing a 180 and throwing the ult at your feet is an easy way to start the odds in your favor that your squad can disengage successfully. And as a Bangalore, this is something you should always be aware of because, like I said before, Bangalore's main role is suppression, whether it be advancing or retreating, nullifying any threats, potential or otherwise, which also means that Rolling Thunder is an excellent tool for gatekeeping. Throwing your ult when a team is outside the ring or busy fighting becomes free real estate thanks to the absurdly long stun duration and the large area it covers. Downed enemies normally get finished off, breakables like doors, rampart walls, fences, etc. take damage, and those left in the open either get stunned or forced to use their abilities to escape which makes it a great deterrent and an excellent way to bait enemies like Gibby into wasting their bubble. But again, this mainly applies to open spaces, because normally enemies will just take cover indoors. So before I go on, a good rule of thumb to never throw a bad ult again is to simply ask yourself, does my ult hurt the enemy more than it hurts my chances to kill them? That's really all you need. For example, does it help me escape? Throw it. Will it prevent a third party? Throw it. Will my teammates get stunned? Throw it. Uh, I mean, uh, don't throw it. Uh, what the
<clears throat> Definitely do not throw it if it hinders your team in any way, because good game sense is ultimately the most important part of being a good Bangalore player. And finally, one of the most useful situations for ulting is using it to force enemies off high ground and aggressively taking positions where you otherwise wouldn't have an opening. If you've seen the how to win while solo video, then you know exactly why controlling the high ground is crucial to all your fights. And if you haven't seen it yet and you struggle fighting more than one person at once, click the link in the corner, open a new tab, and watch it afterward to learn why it's happening. But continuing, by ulting teams on a rooftop, an elevated area or just a vantage point, you're able to force them into cover or put them on defense, allowing you to start engagements you otherwise wouldn't be able to, creating openings for aggressive rotations, especially when paired with characters like Foul, Octane, and Pathfinder, who can all move vertically fast enough, allowing your team to rapidly close the gap and secure the advantage. By now, I hope it's starting to become more clear why most players fall short when they play Bangalore. Because the main point I want to get across in this video is that Bangalore's kit benefits massively from an aggressive and proactive playstyle that mainly focuses on nullifying all enemy advantages and taking them for yourself. And until you play her aggressively, Bangalore's real potential is never fully realized. Her kit is deceptively simple, but that is the beauty of it. And it's why great Bangalore players like Shiv, who take full advantage of her kit, are able to dominate every single fight, no matter how many enemies they're facing at once or how crazy it gets. And my dudes, if that, the Bangalore guide comes to an end. I really hope you found the tips useful and hopefully I managed to shed some light on why Bangalore is actually really good and kinda slept on. And again, tell me what you think about Bangalore's kit in the comments. Do you think she needs a buff? Or in the recon heavy meta, is she fine where she is? Don't forget to like for the algorithm, subscribe so you don't miss anything, and check out the best aim guide for Apex on YouTube right here. Have a go on my dudes and suit monkey out.